together, perhaps in this space, perhaps you were behind your screen. It was such a different moment. And here we are today celebrating the life of our dear Linda. So many more of us able to come together. So many more stories to tell. In such a different place, we have both the sad with the celebration today. We couldn't find the celebration six months ago. But today we have both, because today is not just a moment of memory, but it is a moment of celebration of a life beautifully and well lived, surrounded by family, dear friends, and loved ones. So in this moment that is not captured completely by sadness, we turn to the words of Ecclesiastes, so the words of our tradition that remind us that with every sad, there is a happy, with every time of joy, there are times of tears. We're able to see that flip side now because with every season, we're able to bring a different part of ourselves, and a different side of our story into view. To everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season turn, turn, turn. And a time to every purpose under heaven. Time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to laugh, a time to weep, to everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season turn, and a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to build up, a time to break down, a time to dance, a time to mourn, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together to everything. Turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. And the time to every purpose under heaven. A time of love, a time of hate, a time of war, a time of peace, a time that you may embrace. A time to refrain from embracing to everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season turn, turn, turn. And a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to gain, a time to lose. A time to rend, a time to sow, a time for love, a time for hate, a time for peace. I swear it's not too late. Do everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season turn, turn, turn. And 
got time for every purpose under heaven. These words to remind us that even in our sorrow, that joy will come. And I hope joy has come because I can't imagine a celebration of Linda's life without a lot of joy. Because that was something that she embraced and that she lived regularly. And in fact, she's the only one missing today. Amy was saying, God, mom would have loved this. She would have wanted to be here. So as we continue on with memories and stories, let's welcome her in here. Welcome her smile and her laughter and all of the stories that make up a life well lived. The family have prepared some words but this isn't uh, a scripted event. By all means, after, especially after the family have um, shared their stories, it's an opportunity that we didn't really have when Linda died to embrace our family with the stories of Linda. So as they are sharing, think about a memory that you might share um, to help them to trigger a memory that maybe they've forgotten. We have that responsibility for the family today. So for the family members that have prepared words, I don't know what order you're doing it in, but the microphone is here. And please bring Linda into the light of this space. Let her memory shine beautifully and radiate like the sunset. wonderful and amazing mom. Mom was beautiful, kind and thoughtful, and would do anything for the people that she loves. She brightened the lives of everyone that she touched, and there's no one else that I would rather spend time with. When I was young, we would spend lots of family time together. Some of my fondest memories are birthday parties at Stonecrest School and Mr. State, backyard barbecues, playing kick the can with the neighborhood kids until the sun went down, and playing on our swing set. We spent every holidays with Graham, Papa and Grandpa, had burgers for dinner and Pepperidge Farm layer cakes for dessert. <laughs> Road trips to New Jersey to visit our cousins, summer days at Green Lakes and Drumlins. I'm sorry, 9-11 uh, is here. Everybody please check their phones. Um, one phone is calling 9-11 and they keep coming back and they can actually hear the ceremony, which I think is very, very nice. So just, just check your phones and make sure that it's hung up. Sorry, thank you. Everybody just check them and hang them up if they're open. I'm sorry about that. We took road trips to New Jersey to visit our cousins, spent summer days at Green Lakes and Drumlin, 
swimming, skiing, and ice skating with Dad at Hamburger Pond. Mom lovingly encouraged my starring role as Glinda the Good Witch in her temple production of The Wizard of Oz. I had so much fun. Nothing was more beautiful than my enormous pink tool dress, sparkly crowned and magic wand. Nothing was worse than my singing voice. Mom's support for what I wanted to do was unconditional. I will always remember the extreme confidence that mom instilled in me. Our entire family looked forward to visiting grandpa and vacationing in Florida to escape the Syracuse winters. It was two weeks of excitement filled with lots of fun activities. We visited different theme parks, beaches and flea markets, spent long days at the pool, had early bird dinners with sunburned cheeks and late night shopping until they turned out the store lights and kicked us out. Some nights, Dane and I would stay home while Grandpa babysat so that Mom and Dad could go to dinner and dancing at yesterday's. I remember watching Mom as she got made up and ready for their night out. I loved how she feathered her hair and her pink and purple strappy Vanilli heels. I remember taking the pictures of them on the lanai before they left for their night out. They were happy and fun, and I couldn't wait to do that when I grew up and be just like my mom. Mom never minded if we made a mess or got dirty. She let us be kids and have fun. Dana and I played school, roommates, had tea parties and sleepovers in my twin beds. We made snakes from Play-Doh, used my Easy Bake Oven until the light bulb blew out, and danced and sang to songs blasting from our big green record player. She surprised us one day and let Dana and I go to the movie theater alone to see Grease. We felt so special and grown up, and she even stayed to let us watch it twice. We spent our Saturdays shopping with Mom, Graham, and Dana, looking for bargains and buying our back-to-school wool sweaters mid-summer when they went on sale. If Mom sent Dana and I to our room, which happened often enough, we would string dental floss from each of our doorways across the upstairs hallway and slide notes to each other. We thought we were being sneaky, but Mom knew that it was really sister bonding time. Growing up, when mom and dad had date night, Dana and I looked forward to our Saturday nights with a babysitter and TV dinners on snack tables in the family room. So many great memories. Playing and fishing down at Limestone Creek, rock collecting and painting, playing in the Cooper's backyard sport, putting on neighborhood plays and making up show productions that we created tickets so everyone could come watch after dinner. Walks to snow top in the swan pond, Harvey's drugs for school supplies, taking the shortcut and having to run by Bacchus's cage to go to Carl's to buy marathon bars and fruit, fruit roll-ups. I was a happy child, but not typical at all. I enjoyed being domestic like my gram. I loved cooking, cleaning, and baking when I was young. Decorating and organizing were also fun hobbies for me. During my junior year of high school, I was thrilled to have my parents leave for a vacation to go to Canada. While most 17-year-olds would have had a raging party, I was not normal. I took this as an opportunity to surprise my parents with a makeover of their master bedroom. <laughs> Mom loved it, which delighted me beyond belief. It became my mission to redecorate our house one room at a time. She was the mom that all of my friends went to for advice. They all confided in her. She always managed to find the perfect balance of parents advisor and trusted friend. Mom was even skilled and practical. She made good decisions, was never extreme, and did everything in moderation. She even attempted to negotiate with me about some of my consequences as she realized that I did not accept punishment very well. While this was not typical, she found a way to compromise with me. That was mom. She was all about compromise. When I was 18 and applying for college, she helped me focus on my strengths and find a school with a nutrition major so that I would enjoy my studies and love my career. She paid attention and guided me to figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. Mom knew me, she recognized my passion, and once again was spot on. After college graduation, I shocked mom and dad with my sudden move to Washington, D.C. It was the most impulsive and crazy thing I've ever done. While it was outside of mom's comfort zone, she supported me wholeheartedly and allowed me to succeed and fail so that I could learn my way. Mom and dad adored Stephen and loved seeing me so happy. 
Not only did they gain a great son-in-law, but they also hit the in-law jackpot. We gathered together for holidays and every, everyone lovingly crammed into our first home in DC while the great grandmas bunked in the basement. Mom and Judy, they adored each other. They adored each other immediately and I had the gift of two incredible moms. Some mothers may have been jealous of my new relationship with my mother-in-law, but not mom. She saw it as the more loved the better and could not have been happier for me to have Judy in my life. We ran around and did so much together. A New York City girl trip, we went wedding dress shopping, house hunting, and did more eating and laughing than should be allowed. One of the most important milestones for mom was the birth, birth of her grandchildren. Seeing her and the love that she had for Jared and Sophie will forever be my greatest memory of mom. She spent so much quality time and gave them unconditional love and never ending support. Mom was the most warm, silly, genuine and loving man on the planet. Her grandchildren were the loves of her lives and she took every opportunity to tell them how wonderful she thought they were and how much she loved them. My kids will forever have the glow of mom inside of them. When mom and dad moved here, Judy and Mark took mom and dad under their wing and made them part of their friend group and their world. Collectively, four of them were the Mokotitsis. They bonded over their mutual love of Jared and Sophie and told us they talked about us. <laughs> Behind our backs. <laughs> and that there was nothing that we could do about it. Mom and Judy called themselves sisters. I was blessed that they loved each other so much and felt lucky and proud that they were both mine. Mom was so very proud of her family. She always considered the loving bond that she shares with all of us, especially her grandchildren, her sweetest gift. Watching mom care for and interact with Jared and Sophie brings me the greatest amount of joy, love, and happy memories she was the most kind, ever supporting and loving mother. She was an amazing mom, warm Nana and devoted friend. She was one of those incredible people who always had a genuinely positive attitude and lived her life appreciating the many friends and family that she had. Every cloud had a silver lining to mom. She shared that positive attitude with everyone she met. Her sympathetic ear and encouraging words left you with a smile on your face and with hope in your heart. Mom quickly became adept at the kind of type of social skills that, it would, that would endear and help her advance throughout her life. She became good at sales, marketing, and outreach. She loved all of the jobs she had, especially working with my dad at photos I find. A huge part of her success and her happiness was because of her relentless positive attitude. She was passionate about life and did not need much to be happy. The love of her family, an enjoyable time spent with friends, and seeing her children as successful adults with their own happy families is what did it for mom. She loved us and you with every ounce of her being. She brought so much love into our lives. We are heartbroken to have lost her. Our family talks, trips, and time spent together we will miss the many words of support and encouragement. The great advice given only after contemplating every possible option twice. The unending mutual affection that came so easily between her and us, especially with Jared and Sophie. The confidence she bestowed in me for everything that I did, big or small. She was my biggest cheerleader and I will ever, I will forever carry her confidence in my heart. She was the mom of all moms and the one that I always went to for advice. She told you how it was, even if it wasn't what you wanted to hear. She guided me through all my important decisions and I will always have her in my heart. Her close and enduring friendship and her kind and loving nature allowed her to make friends easily and all of you here. She couldn't stop talking about how happy she was here and how blessed she felt with so many wonderful people in her life. She combined her common sense, cheerful disposition, and strong work ethic 
into an eros irresistible force for good that impacted so many. Throughout some of the medical challenges in her life, she stayed strong, hardworking, and courageous. She did not take no for an answer, and I deeply admired her strength and courage. What mom went through in the end was difficult, with lots of heartache and tears, but I know that we will remember mostly with laughter and love. When mom came home from rehab and struggling to gain her memory, there were so many people in her life that were there, and that's all of you. You were there for her. You were there for me. You were there for dad and my kids and my sister and her family, and that means so much. The world was brightened by all of you, and spending quality time with her was the most wonderful gift that she gave to me and to all of us. I aspire to the same caring and kind nature that mom had and that defined her life. These are the lights that lead us forward in our lives. I will miss her dearly. I am heartbroken for my own loss, but greater to have had her as my mom. Mom, you left me with beautiful memories of your life, which will always be my guide. For now, I grieve your loss but also celebrate your amazing, wonderful life. Your memory and legacy of life will live on through dad, me, Dana, your grandchildren, and the many lives that you touched without your love. Life without her will be hard for us and everyone who knew her, but let us all make mom proud by living, loving, and laughing for Linda. Something beautiful about the fact that mom's final moments fell before one of the holiest days of the year, Rosh Hashanah. They say that extraordinary women feel that they have to hang on until right before the new year because we needed them here. Those who pass right before the new year are considered a sadic, a title given to the righteous and saintly. Mom deserves nothing less than this is fitting. I don't bring up the importance of this because it sounds poetic or intelligently profound, but it rather parallels the way mom drew meaning in every single thing she said and did in her life. Rosh Hashanah was so important to mom, as were all the holidays. Yes, of course, she would love to help Amy and I pick out beautiful outfits to wear to Temple. My grandma Rosie worked downtown at a department store called the Addis, Addis Company in the Crystal Room and she would buy us the finest dresses, corduroy blazers, or skirts, or whatever was in fashion, <coughs> and we would wear them proudly. But the message that came from my mom was not that this was a fashion show, but the most important thing is that you hear the rabbi's servant, sermon. What did he say? She would say, my grandma Rose would be at her orthodox shul, Young Israel, and then we would gather back at Grandma Rosie's house after the chauffeur was blown for our high holiday meal. When I got older, David and I were married and had a family of our own. We came back to Syracuse and my mom proudly took us to Temple Attis. As years passed, my parents would come to Maryland and be with us at our synagogue and they particularly loved the outdoor service at Washington Hebrew Congregation. My mom would be in the kitchen and help me cook her and Ella and Charlie would peel the apples and pour the honey and help roll the mocha bells, set the table, and help us welcome our family and friends into our home. They were with us at every Passover and loved the cherry blossoms in D.C. Countless holidays, countless pictures, countless little mini kisses, mini hugs, and mini snuggles. 
My mom was affectionate and needed no personal space. All the silliness, giggles, many pet names for us all. She called me Mildred. She called Charlie, Charlie Brown, and always lovingly called Ella, Ella Brooks. She made up little songs for everything and would smile and keep everything lighthearted. She wanted to know every detail about my life at every stage, no matter. When I was at camp, she said it's the silverware queen. When I was in college, she wanted to know if my roommate let me sleep. When I finally got, got my first job, she wanted to know every last detail about the people I work with. But when I met David, I think she was almost as in love as I was. And David was like a son that she never had, and the two of them found it, bonded immediately and deeply. David always treated my parents as if they were her own, his own. My mom loved Josh Groban, and David lovingly sent my parents tickets so they could enjoy it together in Syracuse. We always made sure mom did everything she loved to do. We were all so honest with each other and said how we felt and showed our children that sometimes everything may not look or seem perfect, but that's actually what makes them makes it perfect, being authentic and perfectly imperfect. My mom always verbalized how she felt, no sleeping under the rug, and we talked it all out. My entire life, our relationship was about openness. She would talk to me about everything that was going on in her head and in her heart. She said that I was her confidant and I could handle anything she wanted to say, and she was right. She would talk to me about personal things that sometimes moms wouldn't talk about to a daughter, but that was the trust and foundation of our bond. We took care of each other. To say my mom was a wonderful mom was, would not do her enough justice. She was the consummate mom. She was what my call my kids would call now a try hard. She tried so hard in everything she did and at every moment and every stage, whatever and whenever. In elementary school, she was my brownie leader in Girl Scouts. She was my room mom in my classes. She taught my classmates about Hanukkah and brought in a menorah and potato latkes. All my carpools to Hebrew school to dance. She typed all my papers and gave me confidence and independence. Our house had so much warmth and love growing up. My mom was the one that all my friends knew that they could trust and talk to, and boy, did they adore her, and they still do to this day. My mom and I drove down to the University of Maryland and were driving around Fraternity Row, and I said, Mom, do you think I should go here? She smiled and said, I would go here. The rest is history. Both of my parents provided endless encouragement to help pave my way. I decided to go abroad my junior year, and my parents came to visit, took me to Italy. The trips and all the moments paint this big, beautiful picture of our lives together. Not everyone looks through life through the same lens, but my mom and I had perspectives that were pretty damn close. My mom was much less of a risk taker than I am. I remember when I was newly pregnant with Ella, David was opening up his practice, and we were buying our first home all at the same time. My mom found it all very overwhelming and thought it was a lot at once, but as always, mom boosted my confidence and commended the way that I balanced everything in my life. She always gave me strength and support. She was so proud when I pushed her out of her comfort zone, and she told me I made her grow as a person. We were so blessed to share a trip to Israel for Charlie's bar mitzvah. If there was one thing left on their bucket list, this trip was it. One of my favorite photos of my mom is in Israel with the sun rising behind her on top of Masada, the morning of Charlie's bar mitzvah. She turned and looked over her shoulder and there was a glow behind her. It was really magical. She was really beyond beautiful, but let's talk about her beauty, more importantly, her hair. My mom was obsessed with her hair. Would never go anywhere without her rain hat to protect her hair and her blow up. She would always have her nails perfectly done. I don't know a human being that loves to shop more than my mom, except of course my grandmother and my sister and me. We have definitely passed down that trait to our girls. And we always did it together. Everything was together, no matter. When Ella was about 10 or 11, she still had a bedtime, but our tradition started long ago when mom, um, when Black Friday started in Syracuse. Those were the times when Black Friday was really Black Friday. Got <coughs> up in the middle of the night and went. 
we got up and left and about midnight got home at 5 a.m. with a stop for breakfast on the way home. My mom was always up for every adventure, outing, party, coffee date, social occasion, heartfelt conversation, walk around the block, opportunity to meet someone, opportunity to make small talk, and any opportunity to connect with another person. She had a knack for making people feel more comfortable and loving them unconditionally. Ella and Charlie were incredibly close to my mom and she appreciated everything about them and thought the world of them. Not only did my mom love them to pieces as their Nini, but she respected them as human beings. She told me all the time all the characteristics of why they were so great as if I didn't think that already. My parents' favorite times were when they stayed with the kids when David and I went away on vacation. She said that she loved the alone time because she got them all to herself. My mom was there the day our kids were born, cared for them in the middle of the night, giving them bottles, and never stopped throughout, even until May when she helped Ella pick out her prom dress. My mom thought Ella danced, went to countless recitals, every birthday party, and knew all of her friends. She cheered on Charlie's soccer games and tournaments and loved to watch him play tennis. <coughs> She always told me how much she admired Charlie and Ella because they were loving, kind, responsible kids. Mom really thought the kids walked on water. She would make every excuse if they did something that was less than perfect, but only for her grandchildren. My mom was not the kind of person that would tell you what you wanted to hear. Anytime someone shared a disagreement with a friend or family member, she would say to them, what did you do? You might have, what might have been your responsibility? great devil's advocate, and her intention was to have you grow and show empathy and to know what it was like to be in someone else's shoes. Mom made sacrifices and always put herself last. I would watch her always give the best piece of steak to everyone else in the family as it came off the grill and serve herself last. I only understood this as I became a mother and did the same. Little sacrifices, big sacrifices for my mom weren't sacrifices at all. She did it out of pure love. Her joy came from watching other people's joy. She did so much to get joy from her own life. So much in this world right now is confusing and uncertain. But one thing I know for sure is that there was no finer woman in this world than you, Mom. I know that you are peacefully and likely sitting above us now with Grandma Rosie and my father-in-law, Michael, eating chopped liver and having halibut for dessert. You will probably head it to a Mahjong game with a new cute top that you recently bought. My mom would buzz around driving in her car, or as she would like to say it, running all over the place, listening to 50s and 60s music, going about her errands, going into the gym, grabbing dinner at the grocery store, and headed home to have dinner with my dad. And dinner, let's talk about dinner. My grandma Rosie was an amazing cook. My mom was a basic cook, and steak chicken was a specialty. She also did a pretty good thing and invented these things called Nini snacks for my kids after school. She loved to make salads and would give my dad a perfectly balanced meal with a protein, vegetable, and lots of love on the side. Every night after dinner, he would give her a kiss and say, good supper, babe. Then he would ask for dessert, and she would say no. <laughs> so the cooking definitely skipped a generation from Grandma Rosie to me and my sister, but not much else skipped a generation. My mom was the very best daughter to Grandma Rosie. Her devotion was something she was so proud of, and the bond was as strong as the bond between my mom and her daughter. Now my Ella Brooke is the fourth strong woman and a line of strong women, and the bond only gets stronger and stronger between mother and daughter. My mom had so many different phrases or expressions, but one that puts a smile on my face, and I constantly try to remember now is, are we having fun yet? Mom, I promise we are all sad at a loss of yours is beyond great, but we will continue to celebrate everything, participate in everything, show up for everything, and relish in everything, just like you did. We will cheer louder, we will carry your voice loud, we will sing louder and smile brighter for you. I am so thankful for the thousands and thousands of pictures that capture all the memories that we created together. The memories live on in my head, and I will cherish and visualize Mom's presence every moment of every day. 
In so many ways, the world has been rooted for me around my mom. She gave me every gift and taught me every lesson I could possibly need in a lifetime to be filled with happiness, fulfillment, authenticity, and love. Everyone's perception of mom was a true reality. She was as authentic as they come. She lived such a big, full life, and it was filled with everything that was real. She didn't care about having her name in life or to be the star in the show. She was the star of the show, and everyone admired her for the person that she was, not the task that she performed or what she gave to others. Integrity is when you do the right thing when no one is watching. When I was 16, my mom was in a horrible car accident, and she was badly injured, and they told us she would never walk again. My mom persevered, pushed through rehab, and came out better than ever. She had the courage and stamina with anything she felt like she had control over. This quality carried her through so much of her life. This is grit, this is push, and I admire her. I'm so proud of the way my mom lived her life. She was not a dweller. She was the ultimate optimist, and as so many have said and texted me when they heard of my mom's death, many of my friends say they had this character trait from her, and I will be forever grateful. Another gift from mom. All those were gifts, but the ones that didn't cost much money, but worth but the worth was immeasurable. It was the kind of joke in my it was a joke in my house that when my dad bought my mom a card, he would have to go to five drugstores to find the right one, the perfect card for my mom. It was always about the thought, the meaning, and the message. To this day, every time David gives me a card, he says, "I went to four stores to find the perfect one." <laughs> I tried so many times in the last month to sit down and write something about my mom because I knew the day would come sooner and later, but I couldn't do it. I kept a section in my notes and my phone, and every night in the middle of the night, I would come up with bullet points that I would say. There's nothing that I could say here that encompasses everything I think or feel or remember and admire and glean from my mom. Mom, you love the beach so much, and as I sit here and write this, I'm by the ocean looking out at the shimmer. You love the shimmer in the ocean. You would describe the shimmer to me and my family and the brightness and the dancing on the top of the water. Mom, you are our shimmer of light and you will always be. You can't physically be here to share everything, but you will definitely be here in our hearts as bright as ever. I love you, Mom, beyond her. May you rest in peace. I'm David, I'm her other half. And uh, everyone here, I don't know everyone here, but what I'd like to do before I, I read a couple things that put together, the last year and a half of Linda's life was not really that easy. But there's something that comes to mind and it's gonna make me cry. And I'd like you all to help me out for a minute if you could. Sorry, Dana. Um, what I'd like to do is just one small uh, song, if you will, that was one of Nini's favorites. So if you will, you ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. All right, thank you. No, it's okay. So no matter what she went through, she was this positive, wonderful human being. And in the end, it was a horrible road for her to, to, to tow. And she still stopped. And she was in the middle of a car, in the middle of nowhere. She had to sink. And that was just, that was Linda. And it was just awesome. So I have to do that. So thank you for indulging so for me, uh, I take a look at Linda's passing, and it's analogous to my father about two years ago. And for me, how we make it through afterward is a testament to the profundity of the love and the life that was left behind. I'd imagine if someone impacts this world in small ways, I'm sure we miss them and feel the loss. But when someone impacts our lives and all the lives around them in big and small ways, the unconditional and constant ways, the loss is really profound. Linda was a constant for us, for our family, and for so many of us. Linda was really an anomaly because she wasn't my mother-in-law, she was really my friend. Whatever phase of life we were going through as a family, she was always there for us. 
the lessons learned from her wisdoms, but from also going through life with her side by side, is really what weaves the fabric of our lives, the memories, and really what she's left behind. The way that I know someone is important is really quite simple for me. I want to live my life differently. I want to be a better person because of my relationship with Linda. Because of the people who have passed on and some that are still here that make us want to be better people. Linda was the living incarnation of this. She lived in a way that makes us all want to be better people. And if I could just, uh, a couple of words from my mother, who really just wanted Linda to say hello to my father. And then from Jerry, you want to read this? My dad wanted us to read something that he really thoughtfully put together. So, these are my dad's words. To beloved friends and family, how do you heal a broken heart? My most treasured Linda, we were married for 54 years, this December 10th, 2021. My brief flashback to all the wondrous years of raising Amy and Dana, to the bathtub, to dressing the sisterly mix-up of socks, to socks that had to be lettered to keep them straight between them both. Linda and I will never, Linda and I will never forget all the happy memories spent at Amy and Dana's home, and can't forget Linda's rubbing her legs against mine in her bed, and every night before we went to sleep, we would always fall asleep facing each other and then we would close our eyes. Lyndon was never much of a sewer, so many years we brought our family and our buttons and our hemming over to Mrs. Ramage's house. What a wonderful lady she was, and her husband passed within one, her and her husband passed within one week of each other. True love. One of Linda's favorite ways to show me affection was to do blink her eyes and to throw me goldfish kisses. It brings tears to my eyes whenever I think about that. As the many years passed, Linda and I always looked forward to coming to Florida, and in early years, it was to spend precious time with my dad and Margaret. Years later, quality time was spent with Amy and Sophie, Jared and Stephen, also in Florida. My original mother and grandpa never knew Linda. They died too young, and it was a very at a very old age. Taking the auto train down to see our <coughs> Dana and Ella and Charlie and our beloved David was a real treat for both of us. We would stay up all night long. I would stay up all night long watching Linda sleep next to me and watch all the small towns go by on the train. David was very, David was the consummate Passover holiday host. Years went by with the Kaminsky's in Maryland and holiday times. Having delicious feasts at Amy and Dana's house was the sign of conspicuous consumption, to say the least. Life had its sad times through the passing of our beloved Rose, Morris, and my dad, Martin. They will be truly missed. Not a moment or minute passes that I don't remember my lovely Her infectious smile, horn drum glasses, and her particular Linda always loved to have a little kid in her hair. She was a weird child. So my dear and treasure to stay very humble and say goodbye to our Linda. And as they say, fond but never forgotten. Goodbye to my Linda. Please stop. Yeah, that is very beautiful. Really beautiful. And I just want to say, how much we love and admire and respect you for your love and dedication and being so wonderful and caring for mom and filling her cup and filling her heart and filling her life. My mom wrote a card out for her 50, what would have been her 55th wedding anniversary. And I found it in November and it was after my mom passed. And I'm not sure if she gave it to my dad so I took a picture of it, and then on his anniversary, I sent it to them. And she wrote, my dear Jerry, 
our life has been a dream. And we love you, Dad. Mom loves you. And she is, you know, watching all over all of us. When I think about my grandma, I think formally about the lessons and memories she has left behind for me and my family. My Nini was the most upstanding and caring role model that I'm grateful to have in my life. One of the qualities that I admired so much and many people noticed was her affection for the ones she loved. Nini was always so happy to be with us, with family, with her friends. It was what she loved the most. Although a more predominant quality in Nini that stood out to me with her desire to get anything done that she set her mind to. Regardless of the weather in Syracuse, she was always outside getting her daily walks in. I remember that whenever she would visit, she would tell me how lucky that where I lived, I could take such nice walks. Nini got, always got her exercise in and set an example that you needed to do what was good for you before you did what you wanted. The blessing that I carry on and share, and share for my Nini is her motivation. A willingness to exercise and stay healthy even if you didn't want to. Her work ethic is something that I hope I can replicate for my future. One of the greatest memories I have was my bar mitzvah trip to Israel. She was alongside me in one of the most impactful, impactful experiences in my life. I'm so thankful that she could be there, staying next to me on such a special day. In her way of honoring me at my bar mitzvah, I feel so honored to be there today and pay tribute to my amazing grandma. I'll miss her and love her forever. Saying goodbye to someone who made such an impact on one's life is never easy. My grandmother was the most caring, loving, and kind woman that I know and I feel so lucky to have had such a close relationship with such an amazing woman who dedicated her life to her family. My Nini took care of everyone in our family for her whole life. Her family was her priority from making Charlie and I her famous Nini snacks after school to texting me some heart emojis only a week before she passed. Getting that text was the most special thing as I knew she was struggling and she was still trying to send me her love and tell me she was thinking about me. I couldn't be more thankful that her influence was so strong, especially when times got rough. As her day-to-day -day life started to become more difficult towards the end, I know her heart became more and more full by how much her family around her showed her, yes, words <coughs> of affirmation, but more with their actions, that they love and care about her more than anything. She taught us all that family comes first and to do anything and anything for our family. I know that she was thankful that her two daughters and husband learned so much from her as, as to how important it was to care for people that you love. They took so, such amazing care of her for the last year. My mom would fly down and spend hours on end just hanging out and spending quality time with Nini. She would run around to Trader Joe's restocking the fridge or take Nini to Mahjong. Mom, I've always known that you were such a strong, loving person, but these actions truly really showed your character. You wanted to do everything that you possibly could for your parents, even with two kids and a job. I'm so grateful for the influence that Nini provided in your life and how her morals, traditions, and most importantly, her kind heart is shown through you every day. One of my favorite memories with my grandma was our Thanksgiving weekend tradition. For years and years, when my nanny and papa lived in Syracuse, we drove up to spend Thanksgiving weekend with them. I remember we always brought, nanny always bought cookie crisps because my mom would never buy them for me and that was what grandmas were for, right? To buy you cookies for breakfast. <laughs> me and my nanny would wake up early, and at the time I didn't sleep till noon, to watch the Thanksgiving day parade together. Then me and my mom and nanny would spend all day in the kitchen making Thanksgiving dinner together. My favorite thing she made was sweet potatoes with marshmallows on top. I remember on some occasions, Nini would have her friends over to come spend the holiday with us. That was something so special about my grandma. She cared for them as she would for her family and opened them and welcomed them with open arms. After dinner and dessert, my favorite part, no, not the cleaning, was Black Friday. The Destiny Mall was our home away from home. Nini, my mom, and I would run around that mall like absolute crazy people from 11 p.m. to 3, 3 a.m. earliest. When I say that my grandma was just as excited as her 11-year-old granddaughter to be up and at him at midnight, I'm not kidding. Every store we walked into, she would be just as excited as I was. 
not because everything was on sale, but because she was with me and my mom. That night, we would come home and end up picking up whatever leftover dessert there was, usually some apple pie or the fine favorite coverage farm cake. I can think of a million other stories to explain my relationship with my grandma, but we would be here for days. I'm going to miss her so much, and I know that wherever she is, watching over all of us every day. She's watching over all of us every day. My mom sent me this Winnie the Pooh quote the morning that my grandma passed, and I think it's very fitting. How lucky am I to have something that makes things goodbye so much? Now, I know you guys were told uh, not to give tips, but I will be accepting tips. Um, you can bring them up and put them in my pocket later. So, if you don't know, um, I'm my Nana's firstborn uh, grandchild. Some might say her favorite grandchild, but not me, but some. Um, so I'm just gonna tell a couple stories. Um, the first one that I wanted to tell was just about how she was just so adored by everyone, everyone she met. Um, I just remember as a little kid going to the White House where she used to work and meeting all the people who worked there, the Nike guy, her boss, the party planner, and none of them had a single bad thing to ever say about her. It was always, I love your Nana so much. She's so great. She does X and Y for me. She's awesome. And it was, it was great to hear that uh, from other people to, to know that she wasn't just great to me. She was great to everyone. Um, Something else she wanted uh, for me and for others was to be the best that I could be um, in elementary school. She always happened to be there right when I would get a phone call home, right when I would get in trouble. And she'd always be waiting for me at the table, giving me this look, I know you did something. You better fix it. So she was always there, I'd, I'd get grounded, I'd be in my room and I'd come out and she'd be sitting at the table just giving me this look. I know what you did. I know what you did. She'd always tell me it was important to, to be respectful of others, and boy, did I learn that. Um, and uh, she always made, uh, made an effort to make sure that I was studious and that I kept on with my studies. Um, if she heard that I was falling behind, if she heard that I had low grades, well, that was the end of that. Um, another thing is uh, a little story. Um, one time, uh, I think five or six years ago, or I hope not that long ago, um, she was also here when I got in trouble and uh, I got in a big fight and I went up and I hid under my bed. And my parents spent maybe two or three hours looking for me. They're like, I thought he, ran, like, he must have ran away, he, he must be gone. They're like, go, go look for him. So I sent her upstairs. She knew immediately. She walked right to my bed. She looked under and she goes, I knew you were here the whole time. <laughs> Somehow she knew. Uh, I'm not too sure. Um, another thing is, I don't know, any of you guys college basketball fans? Anyone? Mm. Never actually met a grandma that was as big of a college basketball fan as my Nana was. Um, she was a huge Syracuse basketball fan. When I mean she was a Syracuse basketball fan, she could name the starting lineup, she could name every player, she could name the top scorer, she could name the coach, she could name all four assistants, like that. She, she started my love for Syracuse basketball and every, every time there was an opportunity to see her, there was always a gift coming and it was usually a piece of Syracuse gear, it would be a sweatshirt or an out of the orange plush toy or um, socks or slippers. And she knew, she knew I'd wear it every Syracuse, every time there was a Syracuse game on. I'd, uh, I'd put on my whole outfit, I sweatshirt, socks, orange and blue and white spray paint and face paint. I wasn't actually going anywhere, I was just sitting on the couch. Um, and we, she'd come over and we'd watch the Syracuse games together and when things would get tough, she'd sit on the couch and I'd go and I'd grab a handful of oranges and I would nervously sit in the kitchen and peel them and shove them in my mouth because I thought it would help us win. Uh, one of my other favorite things to do is when we would visit, she'd, um, we'd go to Snowtop, the ice cream place, and we'd hang out at the duck pond and she'd watch as I'd crawl all over these weird walls that were somewhere by the duck pond. I'm not really sure why they were there, but they were there. 
and she'd watch and she'd stand there nervously hoping I wasn't gonna fall and hoping she wouldn't have to take me to the doctor and hoping she wouldn't have to face my mom saying, oh, he fell off the wall. <laughs> another, another thing we like to do is we like to all eat pizza together and um, pizza's my favorite food and she'd, um, we'd uh, go to West Shore Pizza or when we were in Syracuse, a place called Twin Trees. Um, it's my first square pizza, or more a rectangle, but I guess that's a square too. Uh, something else she she loved was Thanksgiving. It was her favorite holiday. Um, not my favorite holiday, but she loved it, and she passed that on to, to my mom, and she loved, she was like a vacuum. You put food in front of her, and she'd just inhale it all. Like I, I, I'd like to call her our garbage disposal, because when we were finished, we would just... Here's, here's the plate, and she would scarf it down, and you look over, and wasn't there just a mound of food on that plate a second ago? Um, another thing she liked, um, she instilled in me was her love for thrift shopping. Uh, the last time I can remember um, that I was thrift shopping before the pandemic, my mom and I were in a thrift shop, and we're looking through the shelves, and we turn around, and there she is. We, we didn't even plan it. She was just there. She was already already there, and we, we didn't even give her a call or anything. We just turned around and there she was, looking through a bunch of shelves. She's like, do you like this shirt? We're like, how'd you know we're here? <laughs> and uh, that was my, um, that was shortly before uh, her diagnosis. And, and um, uh, the last thing I remember uh, that I got to say to her was, I walked her out to her car and, and I just, I, I told her how much I loved her and I was actually leaving back to school the next day and we just exchanged um, kisses and, and goodbyes and and it was little did I know it was actually the last time that, that we got to have a, a full conversation and so I, I always cherish that but um, one more thing uh, as, as as she uh, her condition worsened there was always something she always wanted to let us know that, that she loved her or that she loved us she was always saying, I love you so much. And um, the last the last time I actually, I, I saw her, I picked her up, uh, I met my mom in a parking lot and she dropped her off, she gave her to me, we exchanged hands. And she got in my car and the whole ride home, she was just telling me, I, I love you so much. I'm I'm so happy to, to be able to see you and be with you and, and be a part of your life and, and that just meant so much to me. Um, and one more story I'd like to share because she's not here to share it. Um, when I was, I don't really remember, but when I was one or two, maybe three, uh, it was Halloween and I got a whole box of candy, a big one, probably, say this big. And uh, she watched me as I, I sat on the floor and I'd, say, I'd look at her and I'd say, dump it out. And I would dump the whole bag of candy on the floor. And she'd look at me and she said, does this kid not know what candy is? Why isn't he eating it? And I'd pick it all up and I'd put it back in the in the bucket. And I'd look at her. She's wondering, why isn't he eating his candy? And I'd say, dump it out. And I would dump it all back out on the floor. And I'd do that over and over again. And she, she loved to tell that story. So uh, that was... That was my favorite story, that was her favorite story, and I wanted to thank you guys so much for being here and for supporting our family through this, and um, we, we really appreciate it, thank you. Who's next? I will remind you, I, I'll, I'll be here all night. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank you all for your your patience and for coming here and sharing our memories of Amy and Dana, mom and Jerry's wife. There are a lot of ways to remember a person. We talk about what they've done with their lives. We talk about whose lives they've impacted. And we talk about how they've handled their successes and their setbacks. There really is no one way to remember a person, but something that has always stuck with me 
is the quality of friends that that person has. When someone passes away, I often think about that person's friendship. Who have they been friends with? And what were those relationships like? Ever since I first met my mother-in-law, I was impressed by the connections she shared with her friends. They all truly loved each other, and they all really helped each other. Linda would always talk about her friends and how fortunate she was to have such wonderful connections with people. Family friends, work friends, old friends, and of course, new friends. She was fortunate to have such wonderful bonds with all of these people, many over a long period of time. My mother-in-law had a wonderful ability to create lasting friendships wherever she went. The great thing about friends is we all get to choose them. And of course, our friends always get to choose us. So for me, seeing how close Linda was with her friends kind of reinforced in my mind the kind of person she was. Linda and her friends displayed deep, displayed deep caring about each other. My mother-in-law was interested in what was happening in their lives and often thought about how she could help if her friends needed assistance. Conversely, I've also been amazed at how her friends would often rise to help her in her time of need. We've shared such wonderful stories about Linda today, and I know there are a few more coming, and I appreciate your patience very much. I just wanted to conclude by saying how fortunate I was to have had such a great person as a mother-in-law. I will truly remember her, love her, and never forget her. Thank you. Nana touched many lives, more than anyone could count. Whether it was family, friends, or even strangers, Nana made an impact. An impact that would last longer than a lifetime. The thing about today is that Nana wouldn't want it to be sad. She'd want us to smile, to hug, to share her stories, to, show, to celebrate her life, and to remember the influence she had. She would want us to tell each other how much we loved one another because she never felt sure of letting us know. 
Nana's heart and generosity knew no bounds, and her door was always open. It is not so common for a grandparent-grandchild relationship to be so essential and long-lasting, but we had one. She was my best friend. was my best friend, someone I could always confide in, someone I could always count on, someone who made me laugh until I peed and smile like no other. It didn't take much to make Nana happy. A phone call, a card, a meal, or a kiss. She lived to make our lives that much better. The biggest piece of advice anyone ever gave me is to never live life with any regrets. And that is exactly what she did. Nana did everything and anything, and I really mean anything. Whether that meant traveling, visiting family and friends, finishing up a long day of work, or devouring the largest piece of chocolate cake, she did it all. Nana used to tell me how much I was like her. From her long legs, light eyes, blonde hair, and fair skin, I really grew up to be just like her. She was my twin. She was the only other person who could bake in the sun for five minutes before turning into a tomato. The only other one who could eat even if she wasn't hungry, and the only other one that would dance with me to any beat, no matter where we were or who was around. When Nana and Papa would visit, we would squeeze every minute into their trip. But it was when they moved here that everything changed. I was the luckiest girl to have both sets of grandparents living than, less than 10 minutes away. A true escape from after school snacks to sleepovers to little stop bys, nothing was better than the grandparents' house. When we celebrated Thanksgiving at our house and everyone was on their way over, Nana would always call me to make sure that I wasn't wearing jeans but only stretchy, stretchy pants. We had to maximize our space. <laughs> For those who aren't aware, Thanksgiving was Nana's, my mom, and my utmost favorite holiday. Yeah, yeah, the holiday was great, but nothing compared to stuffing her faces until Nana landed right on the couch with her elbows flung over her face. She'd nap until dessert when I'd wake her, knowing she wouldn't want to miss her favorite part of the meal. After pie, Nana would get in her nightgown, crawl into my bed until we'd wait for Black Friday shopping about two hours later. When it was girls' day, no events could commence until after we ate. Eating was probably the best and most important part of our day. Nothing could ever stand in the way of our food. Food always came first, and whatever happened after that was a mystery. As long as our bellies were full, nothing else mattered. <clears throat> Many years ago, my mom shared the story of when Nana was in a horrific car accident. After much time, the doctors reported news that they did not think it was possible for Nana to ever walk again. Well, nothing was impossible for Nana. From water aerobics to yearly turkey trots, there was nothing Nana couldn't or wouldn't do. She was the strongest woman I knew. Her perseverance showed everyone that life was too short to not try again. 30 years later, when she contracted HSV-1 and was brought to the hospital in the beginning of February 2020, the doctor concluded once again that she would not be leaving her hospital room. 16 months later, it might have been a struggle, but she was still here living the best way she knew she could. The point of this story 
is that no matter, no matter how many times she was knocked down or made to endure things no one should, she just kept coming back. She would defy the odds. She was a fighter, a huge one at that, and she never let what was said go. Her zest for life, her unconditional love, her kind heart and free spirit is what made her my hero. The special bond we have is something that will never be broken and allows her to remain just as alive as always, alive through me. Nana, you impacted so many lives in so many ways. You've helped shape who I am and who I want to be. It will always be us against the world. May you rest peacefully while watching over me and all of your loved ones. I love you to the moon and back and around again. actually sweet tomatoes and, um, it's a little they, they actually heard um, the news and they decided out of out of respect that they'd be closing all of their locations <laughs> we could go on and on and on. The memories are endless, the love is limitless, and the joy is pouring out of our eyeballs. Yeah. At the end of each line, I, I realize not everyone had a chance to share, and, and that's okay, because we have it here, and hopefully we've shared it with the family, but I do want everyone's voices to come together um, to be a part of this as well. So at the end of each line, I'd like you to respond, we remember her. So we go, in the rising of the sun and in its going down, we remember her. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember her. In the opening of buds and in the rebirth of spring, we remember her. In the blueness of the sky and in the warmth of summer, we remember her. In the rustling of leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember her. In the beginning of the year and when it ends, we remember her. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember her. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember her. When we have joys we yearn to share, we remember her. So long as we live, she too shall live, for she is now a part of us as we remember, remember her. When Jews remember, they put up monuments. And the first time that this happens is in the book of Genesis when the original love story of Jacob and Rachel comes to its close. Jacob sets up a pillar for Rachel that may be returned to. But, but see, we didn't have monuments quite like the ones we have today. 
people would bring stones and they would pile up and that would be the place that you would know to come back to because everyone who remembered that person would put a stone and it would create a pile, a pillar. But now we have beautiful memorials to remember our loved ones that we might come back to, but we still place um, a piece of memory. How many of you have held a shell up to your ear? Right, you can, you can hear the water, but there's no water in there and the, the ocean is a distant memory from that shell. And much like Linda is an echo of memory within our hearts, we're gonna use shells, much like she appreciated so much the beauty of the ocean, we're gonna use shells as our stones of memory. So, a little bit of choreography. We're going to conclude together with the recitation of Kadish Yatom. And then please carefully and cautiously and as safely as you can, we'll have the shells here. The stone is just under the tree to my right, that over there. And it's gonna be an opportunity for you to take a moment to place your memory upon the stone or around the stone. And at that point, the family thanks you for being here and wishes you a good evening. Please everyone continue to do this as safely and carefully as possible, especially as you're walking back to your car it's a little bit darker over there. So let's all just be mindful of one another and, um, and look out for one another. Um, I have a few copies of Kadisha Tome if the family would like them. Amy, do you? I'm good. You're good? Any of the family want them? It's a little dark anyway, but. Here, Jane, a few minutes, does anybody want them? <coughs> I'll ask everyone who is able and comfortable to please rise. As we join together in the prayer of memory, celebrating the life of Linda Fine. Yit kadal de yit kadash shame raba, be alma di vra firute vi amlit malfute. Laela min kol birchata veshirata, tushpechata venechemata, da amiran de alma vimru amen. Yehe shlama raba min shamaya, vechaim aleinu ve al kol Yisrael vimru amen. O se shalom vimroma, hu ya ase shalom, aleinu ve al kol Yisrael vimru amen. May the memories of Linda Fine echo like that ocean within that shell. May her memories be for blessings upon blessings. May we continue to support her family, Jerry, Dana, Amy. This concludes our service. So please carefully, I would recommend that we stay I need a train. <laughs> if you make your way against the trees and kind of make motion. And when you're ready to walk, please feel free to walk through our home. We don't want you walking through that uh, dark area over there. Please walk through the, the home and we'll have the door go.